I'm probably looking at a minute again and you will be in the frame there so you're gonna have to come out I'm afraid <laughs> Well, I think yes, 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 yes. This tree behind me will work. I will get the camera out now and I will get it on the tripod, get it quite high up, point it up into the sky and fill the frame, that square format frame of my pinhole with all those branches and those nests. It's gonna look great. Righty-ho, let's get the little teak box set up on the tripod. It's pointing in that general direction, so, you know, it should be all right, shouldn't it? It's going to encompass the trees and some of these ferns and everything else. And if there's a bit of movement, yeah, even better. Now then, film. Well, yes, film. We do need film in the camera, obviously. I have loaded, I have loaded into the camera some T-Max 400. And the reason I've gone for T-Max 400 is it's, it's not only a 400 speed film when it's a dull uh, afternoon, but it has little or no reciprocity failure at most speeds until about two minutes. Had I chosen an Ilford film, it would start to suffer after one second and the exposures could run into many minutes or, or even hours. And finally, and, and finally, light metering. Now I haven't brought my spot meter, couldn't be bothered. So I will have to load up a little app off the phone. Let's have a quick look what I've got, little light meter app. So you can see it looks like an old Western light meter, one of the old uh, bacheless light meters. And I'm gonna use it to take a, a sort of average reading. I don't want some sort of shadow detail. I want the, the thing to look very graphic bit soot and whitewash, a bit like a sort of lith effect really. So let's just point it up, get about half of the frame with the trees and about half with the foreground. It's about a 15th of a second at f22. So if you take that out and extrapolate, it's a big word, we've got uh, f32, 45, 64, about 96. Uh, it's about six more stops roughly than that. So if we're getting a 15th of a second, did I say? So I'm going to do an exposure at uh, two seconds and another one at four seconds. Nothing fancy about the shutter because it hasn't got one. You just slide a piece of wood out the way. A big shout out to Kodak here. The numbering on the backing paper is so clear. The numbers are very, very bold. They jump out at you, even with the mild eyes. Ilford, just not so good you are squinting away you end up needing glasses or you have to use your iphone or similar to get really close to it uh, fuji used to be good but i think now acros is coated by ilford so you get the same crummy numbering not good enough now my little camera for today is a zero image 2000 a six by six square format pinhole camera with one of the best pinholes you'll ever find on a pinhole camera i mean Pinhole photography is supposed to be sort of lo-fi and fuzzy, but the, uh, the zero image cameras, they've got fantastic pinholes, they're very sharp in the center. So, yeah. Ooh. Sorry, I thought I was being stalked there by something. I think it's pheasants. Um, yeah, could be nasty. It can turn nasty pheasants. Anyway, back to the pinhole camera. Yes, there's a little teak box. It's actually quite waterproof unless you get a blob of rain on the uh, pinhole. Blob, blob of rain. In case you get a drop of rain on the pinhole, in which case it will, uh, yeah, it just won't expose because there's not much light gets through those pinholes at the best of times. But I have used this camera for many, many years. They make them in lots of formats and they weigh nothing. They're very durable and they're an absolute blast to shoot with. Think of them as the, uh, the slow version of a holder. Something will jump out at me in a minute. Hopefully not something wild and angry. See what I can line up. Some of those lovely leaves and fronds and ferns in the shot. Yeah, let's go for about there, shall we? Okay, now exposure. Exposure is going to be a bit of a tricky one here. I've taken a rudimentary light meter reading with the iPhone app again. And I reckon we're looking at at least a minute now. There's no wind. If I move around too much while I'm standing here, it is going to introduce movements. And uh, all right, we want a soft image because it's pinhole, but I don't want it to be moving at the same time. So lots of patience required for this one. I'm 10 seconds in and I'm already fidgeting and bored and I want to move. So I've got the attention span of a blue bottle. Well, I'm going for 90 seconds in the end and I think I need a shave. I was clean shaving when I started this exposure. And uh, yeah, I think I've aged considerably. 
but we're getting to the end of it now and I am going to slide the little shutter back across and wind it on. Other pinhole options, well there are 35mm pinhole cameras, I don't actually have one at the moment. You can get large format pinhole cameras, I have one, I've never used it. I also have a Holger a 6x12 pinhole, had one before actually, and I do like that format for pinhole cameras, it really suits the letterbox. So I need to get out with that. I think in 2022 I will be shooting more pinhole because I just like it, I think it's very creative. Now I have gone for rather cluttered shooting today to fill the frame up, but some of the most successful pinhole photography and the likes of Steve Gosling, an expert in this medium, are at the seaside. They are large open spaces, they are pebble beaches, they are groins and jetties. They are simplicity itself. They may be taken at dawn or dusk. Absolutely marvellous. Think of sort of Michael Kenner type shots, but with a pinhole. It's absolutely fantastic. And I will be doing more of that in 2022. I promise, promise myself and I promise you. It's just something you need to get your eye in for. And I don't really think, to be honest, to be brutally honest, I've got my eye in sufficiently today, but this is a practice run, a recce for the coming year. And uh, yeah, you need to practice. Photography is as much a craft, or it's more of a craft than an art, in my opinion. I've spotted the killer pheasants. I'm just gonna sneak up on them and give them a taste of their own medicine. Oh. Are those ducks laughing at me? You might also like this video where I shot with the zero rouge pinhole in my local forest. Colour this time, quite a different look. Hope you enjoyed the video and I'll see you again soon.